Hey Jordan, hey Grant, uh, today's video is kind of lacking some of the spit and polish that we normally associate with our videos because today is the first day of spring break and I'm kind of packing up and getting ready to leave. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Pope. Uh, as you know, Pope Benedict, I think that was his name, Pope Benedict IV or whatever. Uh, I just know he was the Pope. He retired a couple weeks ago uh, because at the age of 85 because he didn't feel like he could uh, be the Pope anymore. He didn't think he could handle any of the pressures. Uh, and as hopefully you guys know, some of the pressures were the uh, whole thing about gay marriage, women's rights, and also the whole huge thing about members of their uh, church being molested uh, in some form or fashion. So this week, uh, or actually, uh, a couple days ago, uh, Pope Francis was finally chosen after four or five uh, different voting sessions. They honestly didn't think that he was going to be the one to uh, to get elected, or to get picked as the Pope, but he did. Interesting thing, he's the first Latin American Pope and also the first Jesuit to be, pi to be picked as the Pope of the Catholic Church. Which is really cool because the dude is friggin' awesome. Like, He's the most humble pope that I've seen in my lifetime. In fact, when he was going to get his initiation or, or be picked as the pope or whatever, uh, he rode the bus with the cardinals. I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that so you know what, I, um, what I'm talking about uh, next. Uh, is a little bit about how the pope is actually chosen. It's a really convoluted process. Um, for one, the Pope is picked from the group of cardinals that are in the, the Vatican. So all of the cardinals that are under 80 years old get together in, in the Vatican and they just close themselves in there. And they vote like four times a day, twice in the morning and twice in the afternoon uh, to vote and see which, cardinal, which of the cardinals among them gets to be the next Pope. Now, a lot, you probably heard a lot a bit about the big deal of white and black smoke coming from the Sistine Chapel. And that's because the Cardinals burn their ballots after the, after the voting session. And if black smoke comes out of the chimney in the Sistine Chapel, that means that no Pope has been decided yet. But if, if white smoke comes out of the, uh, out of the chimney, in the Sistine Chapel, that means that they have chosen a new Pope, and that happened a couple days ago. And another interesting thing about the election for the Pope is that he has to get a two-thirds majority vote to become the Pope, which means at this point he has to get like 77 votes because there are, I'm not going to do the math, there are more than 100 Cardinals, there are like 120 Cardinals that all have to vote for the one Pope. And normally, this takes a couple weeks. Uh, for Pope Benedict, it actually only took four votes. For Pope Francis, it took slightly more than that. And they actually were saying that it was going to take at least 12 voting sessions to decide on the Pope. So that's an interest. That's a new, interesting, it's a cool thing. But usually it takes a couple weeks for the Cardinals to all agree on a, a Pope. So we have a new Pope. He's a more conservative Pope. He has more strict uh, stringencies on... on the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Uh, we're probably going to see some new reforms, uh, new things changing in the Catholic Church as things go along, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how he fares in this new exciting world that we live in. That's all I have to say about it, so I will see you guys next week, and I hope you guys enjoy your spring break. I hope you guys have upload videos over spring break. I know I am. And uh, I'll, we'll see you guys, I will see you Grant on Monday, and I will see you Jordan on Wednesday. Stay fantastic.